This video is part two of a two-part teaching aid addressing multi-patient event management policies, procedures, and best practices. Viewers should already have a working knowledge of the incident command system at level 100 or greater, start triage, and the Santa Clara County Multiple Patient Management Plan. The MPMP can be found at secemsagency.org. The objective of this video is to educate field providers and line officers about the proper setup and utilization of the field treatment site. This guide will address key aspects of field treatment site utilization, including conditions of field treatment site deployment, field treatment site deployment and setup, field treatment site staffing and operations, patient flow within a field treatment site. A field treatment site is a portable set of equipment and procedures that provide a location and framework for patient collection, triage, treatment, and transport. It can effectively accept triage and treat large numbers of patients and facilitate transportation for patients requiring immediate definitive care at a hospital. Once a site is established, it will also help reduce non-critical traffic to area hospitals. Field treatment site utilization requires that everybody involved understand simple triage and rapid treatment, or START. The field treatment site consists of several parts. The patient reception area is where patients first enter. This area is staffed with at least one field provider trained in START triage, and patients will be triaged here and assigned to the treatment area. The minor treatment area is staffed with at least one BLS level provider. Patients sent here will be able to walk and they will receive minor care according to their needs. All patients must be re-triaged periodically and if their triage category changes, the personnel assigned here must advise the treatment unit leader. Patients who remain in the minor triage category who require transport to the hospital will be loaded into ambulances as resources allow. The delayed treatment area is also staffed with at least one provider trained at the BLS or ALS level. Following start criteria, patients here should not be able to walk on their own and may require more aggressive BLS or ALS level treatment. The treatment area manager should closely monitor this area for adequate staffing and supplies, and all patients must be repeatedly re-triaged. If a patient's triage category changes, the attending personnel must notify the treatment unit leader. The immediate treatment area is for the patients who are in most need of rapid transport to definitive care. Patients in the immediate area should not be there for long, and staffing should always be adequate to facilitate not just patient care, but also safe and expeditious patient loading to the transport area. This area is most likely to need ALS level personnel in order to treat those patients meeting immediate start criteria. The personnel working here must be sure to keep track of medical supplies and advise the treatment unit leader when levels are low. The transport area is where ambulances will respond to from staging. This area requires a transport group supervisor and, if appropriate, a patient loading manager to ensure that every transporting ambulance receives the correct number and start category of patients. Each transporting ambulance should receive at minimum one immediate, one delayed, and two minor category patients. The transport group supervisor must tear off one of the two triage category tags and keep it to record which patients went to which hospital. The alternative transport area, when needed, is where minor category patients can be loaded onto non-medical vehicles, such as vans and buses, for mass transportation to another location, such as a hospital or temporary shelter. At least one BLS level provider must accompany the alternative transportation vehicle, but the alternative transport area does not require continuous staffing. The medical supply area is where supply caches are stored for use in treatment areas. As a treatment area gets low on supplies, the treatment unit leader can coordinate resupply as needed. This area does not need to be continuously staffed. The morgue area is for patients who have died in the field treatment site. To help keep living patients calm and cooperative, the morgue area should not be placed in view of the treatment and reception areas. This area does not need to be continuously staffed. The casualty collection point is not part of the field treatment site itself. It is where patients are first gathered from a patient generating event before moving to the patient reception area. This location is important to know about because multiple incidents may be sending patients to the same field treatment site and personnel at this location will need to communicate with the patient reception area. 
Overall, the fuel treatment site is able to function with a minimum of five people at the BLS or ALS level and trained in start. At least one person must be assigned to patient reception, minor treatment, delayed treatment, immediate treatment, and transport. The treatment unit leader supervises personnel rendering treatment and coordinates resupply and moving patients between treatment areas as triage categories change. As a field treatment site expands to support a growing incident, additional qualified personnel may be assigned to these areas and additional positions will be filled as needed, such as ground ambulance staging area manager, patient loading manager, the field treatment site falls under the operations section of the ICS structure and is typically managed directly by the medical group supervisor. The field treatment site package is comprised of colored tarps and flags, one each for minor, delayed, immediate, and morgue triage categories, and a variety of support materials such as litters, backboards, BLS medical supplies, ICS position vests for personnel, and position-based checklists. When selecting the location for the field treatment site, Always consider responder safety. It must always be upwind and or uphill from the incident, or sufficiently far away that no hazards from the incident location can compromise the site. Access to clean water and restrooms will also be needed. The total area needed is about 150 feet by 150 feet, but it does not need to be evenly square. The site should have access to electrical power either by landline or generator, and it should be near adequate parking for support personnel and staging emergency vehicles. The layout must allow for a one-way traffic plan for ground-based resources and also allow for access to larger vehicles such as buses and helicopters. The location must have strong enough signal reception for at least one method of wireless communications. The ideal site has good signal strength for both county-utilized radio frequencies and cellular voice and data. It is important to remember that the field treatment site is appropriate for circumstances in which large numbers of patients require assessment and treatment, but not necessarily transport. The goal of the site is to triage all patients quickly and repeatedly so that those who need transport to a hospital get it, and those who don't, still receive appropriate treatment. A single field treatment site may be set up to support a single patient generator or multiple related or unrelated patient generating events. Some example events that warrant a field treatment site are disasters, both natural and man-made, resulting in a large number of patients, anticipated large-scale events, such as sporting events or concerts, evacuation of a skilled nursing or other medical facility. Incident commanders and the EMS duty chief collaborate to determine when and where a field treatment site should be established, basing the decision on several factors which include, but are not limited to, status of the 911 system overall, status of area hospitals, for ongoing incidents, the estimated number of patients needing assessment, treatment, and possibly transport. Once deployed, the field treatment site will help reduce patient volume at local hospitals while still ensuring that patients receive the treatment they need. To support field treatment site operations, there are nine EMS utility trailers located throughout Santa Clara County. These trailers are equipped with the medical and logistical supplies necessary for prolonged operation of a field treatment site. Two units, Utility 125 and Utility 126, are box trucks equipped with red lights and sirens. These utilities are capable of rapid deployment and each contain a large cache of basic medical supplies, such as backboards and oxygen. For fire departments not hosting a trailer, a utility response may be requested through fire or medical health mutual aid. Additionally, the EMS agency can deploy a cabana trailer for use as an environmentally controlled mobile command center during multiple patient incidents. The trailer can be requested by the incident commander through the EMS duty chief or via fire mutual aid. As the incident winds down, the incident commander may begin reducing the resources deployed to the field treatment site. This includes a reduction in personnel to no fewer than five total. This amount is required to operate the site and to quickly and safely pack up all site materials once complete demobilization is appropriate. This video has covered the major aspects of field treatment site setup and utilization, and hopefully you now have a better understanding of this useful resource.